San Diego is a melting pot, drawing people from all corners of the globe. And when you meet someone new, it's almost a reflex to ask, where are you from? Because odds are, they're not locals. Not like it is in, let's say, a small town in Nebraska. Hey, no shade in Nebraska, of course, but you see my point. See, here in San Diego, everyone's welcoming regardless of where you're from. But if you want to blend in like a true San Diegan, then stay tuned. I'm going to share with you some tips and hacks that'll help you live and talk like a local. Let's have some fun. I'm Jamie Lennon, a local realtor, and today we're going to be highlighting local lifestyle hacks here in San Diego, California. If you're looking to buy or sell anywhere in the greater San Diego region, as always, you can call, text, or email me anytime. All my contact information can be found in the description below. To kick things off, if you are an avid golfer, I recommend getting your San Diego resident card. This is going to score you some major discounts to city-run golf courses, among them being Torrey Pines, which is an infamous course that's held past PGA Tours. So while your friends are paying 200, 250 to play 18 holes, you're gonna be paying a cool 80 bucks. Not a bad deal. One bummer about San Diego is we have one airport and it's typically going to be more expensive than any other airport around. So if you are looking to book international travel, I recommend booking through LAX. Just check out and compare prices between the two. You will realize that there is a massive difference. So your next question is gonna be, well, LAX is two hours away, so how does that help me? Well. It's gonna be a little bit of travel time, but we're gonna make it work, okay? We're gonna get on the train. You can get on the train in, let's say, Solana Beach or any other coastal community. You take the train to Union Station up in LA, and from there, you're gonna hop on a bus, the flyaway bus from Union Station. It takes you directly to LAX, so it's about 30 minutes, and there you go. Two hours on the train, 30 minutes on the bus, and you've made it to LAX. Hey, I know it's a lot of work, but you're gonna save at least $500. In turn, if you are flying anywhere in Mexico, don't fly out of San Diego, fly out of TJ. So you're gonna get an Uber or get dropped off at the CBX bridge and you're gonna walk across straight into the Tijuana airport. Now you do have to pay to walk across and typically it ranges between $20 to $25 one way. So definitely factor that cost in when you are comparing prices from a ticket from San Diego. We're basically flying out of the San Diego airport for domestic flights only. Now, parking in San Diego can be quite tricky, especially in high peak season, or maybe you're just going downtown to go to a Padres game, but I got a tip for you. Two apps I wanna highlight are Parkopedia and Spot Hero, which are both designed to make parking easier. Both of these apps provide comprehensive information about parking locations, including availability, pricing, and restrictions, helping you find and reserve parking spots ahead of time, and even at discounted rates. This is going to save you time, and it's going to save you money, because when you're looking for a spot and you are getting flustered, and you just take the first one available, well, that parking garage might just be $50 for two hours. And no, I wish I was joking. This is a true story. It's in Pacific Beach. Let's not forget that we have a train, a train that takes us all the way down to the border and all the way up to Santa Barbara. So think about day trips. Let's say you wanted to go to Carlsbad and you live in UTC. You can take the train from UTC up to Carlsbad, spend a couple hours in Carlsbad Village, and then maybe you wanna go have dinner in Solana Beach. Well, then you hop back on the train, you head south and you get off and you have dinner in Solana Beach. So in North County, it's gonna cover all the coastal communities and heading more south, you have parts of the train going through UTC, so it's gonna be more inland, and then it heads down to Mission Valley and the downtown area, and then takes you all the way to the border. So it kind of stays more towards the west side, but you can just spend a day, you can even take the train from Carlsbad and then hop off in downtown San Diego for a Padres game. Now, while the tourists are going to La Jolla Shores and Coronado, the locals are going to Wind and Sea, which is a very popular beach among locals in between La Jolla Cove and Tourmaline Beach down in PV. And another stretch of popular beaches is going to be an ocean beach near Sunset Cliffs. So in between Sunset Cliffs and the main beach in Ocean Beach, there's going to be so many various pockets of beaches there. Some accessible better during low tide than others, but again, hot spot for locals. And if you're up in North County, definitely 
definitely check out Tide Beach in Solana Beach and Swami's in Encinitas. Here is one of the best tips for anybody that's living in, let's say, North County or really anywhere in San Diego. But if you are heading into downtown San Diego, let's say for Comic-Con or Padres game, whatever it may be, park at Hazard Center, which is located in Mission Valley, and take the trolley into downtown San Diego. So if you park here, you're gonna see that there is a full garage parking and it's free parking. There's even parking on the street that's readily available as well. And you just hop on the trolley. It's a 15 minute ride down into downtown. You're gonna thank me when you realize that it's so much easier, and honestly, more affordable too, when you think about the cost of your time finding parking and paying for parking in downtown. For the best and most authentic Asian food in San Diego, you're gonna wanna head to Convoy Street in Kearney Mesa. This is something that I say often, but a lot of times the restaurants that are in the high touristy areas, even like downtown or any beach community, they spend so much money into the decor because it really looks good when you're taking photos for Instagram and posting, right, free advertising. But areas like Convoy Street, they're not putting money in the decor of the restaurant. So they're putting money into the food and the chef and just more quality. So the food in this area, is some of the best, as opposed to all these nice high-end trendy restaurants that you'll find in PB or North Park. Honestly, if you're trying to go for quality of food, then Convoy Street. It's always gonna be Convoy Street. Now, if you're somebody who frequently crosses the border, I highly recommend applying for global entry. This will take some time and work up front, but once you get it, it is going to be such a breeze going in and out of Mexico. So while all the peasants are waiting in line, you're gonna take advantage of going in the Sentry or Nexus line. Oh, you stupid humans. It has taken me three to four hours to get back into the good old US of A. So yeah, it's definitely worth it even if you go once a month. Well, what are we thinking? Are we feeling like a native to America's finest city? You know what? Let's make this list longer. So I'd love it if you can drop a comment and let me know what your tips and hacks are for living and getting by in San Diego. Let's share with the community and help people get to know all the ins and outs of being a San Diegan. And like I mentioned before, if you are looking to buy or sell anywhere in the greater San Diego region, know that you can reach out to me anytime, call, text, or email me, because I want to help you make a smooth move out to the best in the West when the time is right. And I'm going to leave you the same way I always do, friends, and that is to stay classy. San Diego. <laughs>